Hey guys, Shane here from Fugadec 3D Printing. Today I'm going to give you my review of the Monoprice Select Mini V1 3D printer. Welcome back guys. So as you can see, we're in a little close because this printer is tiny. This is a very small little printer that's capable of printing extremely accurate prints. A lot of people out there have bought this printer simply because it was cheap and it can do these detailed prints which work out great for things like Dungeon and Dragon figurines and other various games that a lot of people are interested in printing themselves because they're very expensive to buy but they don't want to get out of pocket a huge amount for a 3D printer. Now the Select Mini V1 normally retails right around $200 to $220 US dollars on Amazon and Modern Prices website. Now the V1 is on its way out with the V2 coming in now, but the version 1 is still available for purchase. Okay, some quick specs about the printer. So the build volume is 120 by 120 by 120 millimeters, which is about what, 4.3, 4.6 inches for your build volume. The hot end is capable of 250 degrees centigrade. The bed is capable of 60 degrees centigrade. So that's gonna be great for PLA and PLA-like filaments. It also says it can do ABS. It can get the extruder up to temperature, but the build platform does not get up to that high of a temperature, which usually ABS is between 90 and 110 degrees centigrade for the bed. If you use some adhesive to help help out, you'll be able to get it to stick to the bed and that way you can make it happen. You do need to put this in some type of enclosure though for printing ABS, unless you have a very like non-drafty area to put this in because a draft will um, cause splitting with ABS. Uh, the max speed for this printer is uh, stated at 55 millimeters per second. I, I can push that normally, but all depends on your filament. Just remember the faster you print, the higher your extruder temperature needs to be. So if you normally print PLA at say 40 millimeters a second at 190 degrees centigrade, if you're gonna print it at 50, 60, 70, you need to step up your temperature to about 200, 210, 215, just depending on the speed. The results may vary. Another thing with this, this is a Bowden style 3D printer, which means that the extruder motor is separate from the actual hot end. So there is a what's called a Bowden tube that takes the filament from the extruder, pushes it through this tubing, and then out the hot end. A direct drive extruder would be directly mounted to the hot end, and it just pushes it directly down in. There's no tubing in between. It just goes from extruder straight out the hot end. It's it's much more direct that way, hence calling direct drive. It's much more reliable. Printing with a Bowden setup, it's gonna be really hard to print things like flexible filaments, so be aware of that. The hot end on this is completely one-off. There is no other like it that I've ever seen, so if this goes bad, you're gonna pay a pretty penny to get it replaced. Clearing a clog is not the easiest thing to do, but it can be done. So I will say that one upgrade that a lot of people do on this is convert this to an E3D hot end, which there's a carriage that just takes the place of this one. You can swap it right out. It's a very easy mod to do. I kept this stock simply because I wanted to test this thing out for quite a while on just the stock build before I could give a you know in order to give a good review now one thing I did change out was I did put a sheet of build tack on here I am not a fan of printing directly onto aluminum and I am not a fan of using glue I did not have a piece of glass to fit this which a lot of people do but doing that requires modification to where the end stop is triggered and I didn't want to do that so the easiest thing to do is pick up some build tack or build tack like surface PEI sheet anything like that that's going to be an adhesive enhancer that doesn't need glue, you can go ahead and stick it right on here. Now I went ahead and cut out the holes for where the leveling screws go into because I didn't want to have to try and peel this off or anything like that. So with an X-Acto knife, it's easy just to cut those out. Some people, I went the hard way. The easy route is to just notch off the corners. You're not printing over these anyways, so it really doesn't matter if you cut off the corners there. The Select Mini has a very, very simple operating system and it's controlled by this dial here. Now, a lot of complaints do come out and I will concur with the complaints that the dial is not the best in the world. You might click it once and then go to press you know, the center to enter in on your selection and it might shift back to another option that you were just at and you end up printing the wrong G code or you're in the wrong menu, whatever it is. It can be a little bit annoying. One of the best upgrades to do is to pull this off with just a little screwdriver and 3D print yourself a different knob to put on here. It extends it out and makes it much easier control. You can print an entirely new knob or you can print an extender that would go underneath of this one and just pull it out a little bit. That doesn't help with the actual latching and the selection when you're hitting the button or when you're turning the gear, but it does make it quite easier to control because with your finger here, it's not the most accurate, but when you could put two, three fingers on it and do an accurate turn, it does help out quite a bit. Spool holders mounted directly perpendicular to the printer. I am also not a fan of this because I feel that your filament should be facing the way that it's being put 
pulled into the extruder unless you have some other better setup or reverse Bowden tube or anything like that but that's still not going to help in this case just because also the turn radius of where the filament is is fairly tight now it's a little bit better with a larger spool but it can also be a little harder with the smaller spools there is several mods out there which allow you to mount the spool actually in line with your extruder, which does help out quite a bit with the tension on it. Also, uh, this is a metal removable spool holder. It has fairly sharp edges, so it's not the smoothest thing to have to roll over with the spool, so there is much added friction. There are also, again, there are a million mods, I'll say right now, a million mods for this thing. But there are mods out there that can either round this off or there are complete replacements that actually have bearings that go in there that your spool would actually rest on and make it much easier to turn. All that is doing is making it easier for your extruder motor to run because the, the less hard it has to pull the filament, the more it can put into pushing the filament out your hot end. Now on the noise level, I wouldn't call this machine the quietest out there, but it is pretty quiet. I can have it, I normally have it just underneath my desk over here. I normally forget it's actually even printing. Because it goes so slow, I say so slow because my my other printers push 80 to 100 millimeters a second. This one prints much, much slower than that, so it does take longer to print. But because it prints so low, I forget it's even running half the time, which is a good problem, I guess. You know, I'm just like, you know, what was that little tweet? I was like, oh, that's actually still printing. I totally forgot I even how to print on it. First world problems, right? Now, some of the other complaints that have come out about the printer that I have not experienced is the extruder arm here actually breaking. I have replacements printed just because I heard, oh, you have to be so careful of that. I have not had that problem. This is my little turret guy. I think it's just cool. That's why it's on there. I have not had that problem. Results may vary on that. I don't know if people are pushing too hard on it. I tend to be because I know it's a problem or people report it's a problem. I tend to be a little more gentle when pushing this and feeding my filament through. So again, just be aware of that. So I've shown you everything on the front. Uh, there's a couple extra things on here. So this I just have so I can have somewhere to put my little Allen wrench that's just for this. I don't want to lose it. And there's also some slots in here for SD cards. Again, little mods you can print out for this. Uh, this is the magic number. So because this is on a threaded rod, the steps per revolution are calculated and they can be calculated. So someone has gone out there and done the math. And I printed these out. So these will give you the best results. The numbers here will give you the best results for each layer resolution. So I'll make sure I link uh, the STL for this down below. And this was printed on this in dual color, which you can do with many different slicers. And I'll do a separate video on that. Looking at the back, nothing interesting back here. You have your power switch and your power input. On the side, you have your USB mini and you have your micro SD slot. Having a micro SD slot on this is a little annoying for me. So because I have to make sure I always have an adapter around, which is why I have this little extra piece printed up top. So anytime I need one, I just have to make sure I keep putting it back in here so I know where it is. So you have to pull this out, put an adapter, and then put your machine, load your G-code, and then put it back. So the printer also comes with this little plastic scraper, which is absolute junk. Uh, I don't know how anyone could get anything off of this, especially when you're using BuildTac or something else. Maybe off of regular glass, it might work, but it would deform so quickly if you jam it against something and it just can't quite get underneath of it. I think this is absolute garbage. I only kept it so I could show you in the video. This is now going in the trash. A much better solution is just hop on Amazon for some of these little spreaders. I mean, I don't know what, remember they're for exactly, but they are cheap. They're reliable. I've had this one for a year now. It is the main one that I use. It also came with one uh, more of like a trial shaped one, which works out really well as well. But this just works great. Gets right underneath something, helps pop it off, just scoot around it. These are much better, much more reliable. So I don't know why you would even want to use that plastic thing. All right, looking at a couple prints, uh, here I have this like uh, scissor jack that prints all in one and it prints with this screw in it, which is, I mean, truly amazing. It prints without support and prints just like this. So all closed up. And then once you get it, you have to break through to pop this open. Again, this is one of my first prints I ever did on this. And I think it turned out absolutely great. This is using Proto Paradigm's yellow PLA. Squeak, squeak, squeak. I mean, it just, it really came out great. There was a little bit of a retraction issues, but again, off the default settings, I had done no tweaking whatsoever. This printed out absolutely great. This Moai head that I had printed, I think I showed this in the original video, but if I didn't, here it is. I mean, bottom layers came out great straight on to the build tack. There was no any under extrusion issues anywhere. A little bit of pimpling here and there, but again, that was a retraction setting that I needed to tweak. But I mean, for coming right off the printer, that was great. So after some significant tweaking, having the printer for a few months, I printed out this. So this is a little drawer set using a Celavan PLA and each of these drawers printed out separately and they all slid right in without a problem. 
there were no retraction issues, nothing like that. But again, it took a little while, not because it didn't take months, but it took me a few tries to get the retraction settings down to be absolutely where I wanted them. And I have to tweak them for different filaments and whatnot. I was super happy with this. I mean, you can see, it's really hard to tell, but I mean, if you can barely feel any of the lines in this bottom layer is a matte finish when printing on build tack on glass, it'll be nice and shiny. I mean, I could not be more impressed with a print like this. This is a very long print. It, you know, printing the one drawer by itself, these two drawers together, no stringing between them, and then printing the entire casing for this. Took up most of the build volume and it was a super long print, but came out absolutely amazingly. So some final thoughts on this. If you're looking to get into 3D printing, this is where you want to start. With a machine that's already together, that pretty much all you need to do is level the bed and start printing. Everything's calculated for you. You don't have to worry about your steps per millimeter for the X, Y, or Z axis. You don't have to worry about your extruder steps if you're printing with the stock setup. And for 200 bucks, you really can't beat that. There is no machine out there that is already come together for this price with these features that even come close. There's plenty of Kickstarters that come out, but half of them are just end up being trash anyways, or they don't have a heated bed, they're cheaper, but, or you, you can definitely buy China kits cheaper than this. But again, putting that China kit together is gonna take hours and you're gonna have to troubleshoot like crazy. My GTEC is a prime example of that. It took me weeks to get that thing working properly. With pulling this out of the box and printing five minutes, I had a print starting and working well. After a little bit of tweaking Simplify 3D, after about a week or two, I had flawless prints coming off of it. You cannot do any better than this for the price point. And when it comes to layer resolution, it can get down there quite well. I think the lowest on here, 0.4375 is gonna be your layer height. That is tiny and it's capable of printing that. I really like this. I'm really excited for the version two that just came out. Version one, again, is still able to be purchased through Amazon. It seems to be on Notify right now through Monoprice. So I don't know if it's just out of stock or if they have stopped selling it. But again, Amazon does still sell this. If you wanna get one, head up to the link down below. I'll have links for some of the STLs that I have here, some of the things that I've printed and some of my recommendations of upgrades that you do. All that will be down in the video description. My last little disclaimer to this is that this was not provided to me by Monoprice. This was actually provided me by you guys for using my Amazon affiliate link. Back in December, I purchased this machine using the affiliate link money that I received over several months. It did take a little while to get there, but we got there. And I think every one of you for helping support the channel. This has been a key part of my assembly line, I'll call it here, for reviewing filaments and working on different things, different projects that I do. This is a workhorse for me and I love it and I thank you all very much for helping out. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helps you out. I hope this helps you decide whether or not to pick up this printer. I personally recommend it. I would buy a second one if I could and if I can, I would definitely get my hands on the version two to see how it stacks up against the version one. So if you guys like this video if it helped you out please give it a like if it didn't hit that dislike button let me know what i can do better next time this is one of my second printer reviews so please let me know what i can do to improve it if you want to help out the channel if you want to see what comes up next i'll be doing some mods of this printer in the future make sure you subscribe down below hit that bell icon that way you know anytime new content comes out to my channel if you want to support me financially there's a patreon link down below help me out with a dollar more i greatly appreciate it my current patrons thank you so much for your support it really does help out if you want to support me without using your money down in the video description, there's gonna be a bunch of affiliate links. There's gonna be some affiliate links for the parts that I have here, for things you can buy, for buying this printer through Amazon. Purchase with those links. That really helps me out. I appreciate anything you guys do to help out. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, happy printing.